got it. Cheryl Ann, how you doing? I'm doing amazing. How about you, Rob? I am doing doing very well. I know we're, we're in two different parts of the world right now. You are back home in Canada. I am down here in Florida. Um, so it, it's, it's a little bit warmer down here where I am. as opposed Just to a little. <laughs> There's a lot of snow over here. My God, it's so cold. I um, miss Florida. Oh my God. I know it, it's different down here considering it's Christmas next week. And yeah. we're seeing palm trees and, and, and beaches. It's the first for myself and my family. Like we never experienced this kind of thing before in, in our lives. So it's, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different it's amazing. Thing. Different it's thing. Amazing. It, is, it is a great thing. Um, and the freedom that we're feeling down here is pretty phenomenal too. No masks. <laughs> Taking the kids out, you know, playing and just having fun. Let them, let them be who they really, truly are, you know? So that sounds unreal, Rob. Um, you so, know, how Canada is right. Yeah, and we're gonna tell we're gonna let people know what it's like back back home because a lot of people are kind of they have their blinders on they don't want to hear the truth they don't want to know what's going on. So you and I have had experiences um, going through traveling, um, doing what we're doing right now. We'll get into that a little bit later on, um, and we and we can we just want to let people know, you know what what thing like what's happening around them. Yeah, and, like. Reason I, uh, first off, thanks for having, you know, setting a little block of time to talk to me, little old me. Uh, <laughs> thanks for inviting me. I'm honored. No, it's, it, it's great to have you on here and uh, great to have a conversation with you. And this, this is just a place to have open conversation with, with people who are, are like-minded. They're able to think for themselves and they're able to ask questions and talk, talk about stories that, people don't really normally hear right yeah. but, but first uh, I you know, tell tell me about yourself or tell not just myself I know a lot about you but the people who are <laughs> watching right now who are listening don't know you from a hole in the wall they want to know more about you so you know yeah. how old are you you know where are you from stuff like that oh okay cool so I am Caroline Coulomb Pepin I am 26 years old now uh, I am from Valdor. It's a small town in Quebec, Canada, actually. Hence the snow, right? That's the uh, accent that you're hearing right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the snow too as well. And uh, what I'm doing in life is like I'm a licensed distributor for a company in education called TechnoTutor. So, yeah, that's... Uh, nice, nice. Um, so how long have you been with TechnoTutor? Uh, with TechnoTutor, I mean, I'm using it for a year and a half, almost two years from now, but uh, I'm a distributor for almost like uh, 10 months or so, I believe. Yeah. Nice. Now, we're going to get into a little bit, you know, more about TechnoTutor later on and how you, you're you using it. But um, first, I, I want to talk about a couple of things. Yeah, we, sure. We, back in November, we went to your, yourself and myself because I'm an area... <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> area distributor for technical in, in yeah. Canada. <clears throat> wow excuse me again don't die we need you <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah we went back in uh to, we went down to texas in in november yeah. but actually before i i get on to that um you, yourself and myself we're both from canada and we we've seen a lot of these these mandates that are that are being handed out by the Canadian government. Yeah. And one that was handed out was uh, back in back in October. Our uh, our fearless leader, you know, uh, Justin Trudeau, put the message out saying that as of October 30th, you have to be fully vaccinated to get on a plane, train, to travel within within Canada, rental car, yes. um, <laughs> like going to different extremes, right? Yes. So myself and my family, we. We got the hell out of Dodge. We left Canada. We're in Florida now, and we have been here, and we're going to be here for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, but one other mandate that was imposed by the U.S. government on November eighth: anybody coming in internationally had to be fully vaccinated. Now, our event that we went to in Texas, Caroline, was um, middle of November, I think, just before just before Thanksgiving. Yes. And, and you and your brother. We're planning on leaving on November 7th. I don't want to give too much away. You had an experience coming down here. Um, 
let let everybody know what you had to go through. And one other thing, Caroline and myself, we are both unvaccinated. Um, it's yes. by choice. Um, we are not anti-vaxxers. You know, it's it's a very strong word as the media is throwing around out there. Um, we're just pro-choice. You know, we chose not yeah. to get vaccinated, and we feel comfortable about it. Exactly. So, so Caroline, tell us your <laughs> your, uh, your experience, and tell us how calm David was too, because I know he can be a little wildcat. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it can be. <laughs> that make it uh, his charm, right? <laughs> so uh, yeah, David and I, we were looking at the the law, like the rules on the website from the C, how, how does it call? CDC. CBC, CDC website. And they were saying like unvaccinated people can enter US without a vaccine, absolutely. But if you have like an antigen test, you're right to go. We're going to accept it and you can just enter the US and you'll be all right. And it's right on the website, right? right? So we're making sure to have our antigen test and it's like $50. So it's like very less expensive than the PCR that is $300 here. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so we arrived at Montreal at the airport and we were like, okay, so we got our tests and the lady's like, oh, like I have a bad news for you guys. I'm like, What's going on? She's like, you need a PCR test. I'm like, no. <laughs> and look, we show her the website. It's like, it's right there. Like it is written here that I can enter the US with my antigen test, even if I don't have my vaccine. And she's like, no, like the rules has changed like two days ago. And I'm like two days ago, and you didn't change your website. Like, did you, like, maybe you could have like called me or something like now what I'm gonna do. And she's like, Oh, you have to take a PCR test, pay for it. It's like $300 and then you're ready to go. I'm like, how many time it will take before I have my result? And she's like, oh, like maybe an hour or so if you're lucky. I if I'm lucky, like you and I, we know luck suck. Okay, that doesn't, anyway. So we just like, we didn't have any chance and we didn't try to, to you know, uh, upsnake with a lady because we really wanted to make it there. Like we wanted to go to Texas. It was like, yeah, <laughs> you know why. So we just go and take the test and we received the result an hour after and we missed the plane, of course, obviously, because we just missed it. Of course, it's like, oh no, the, the plane is closed. You have to stay here. And, and she set up another uh, flight for us like the next day and like we had to sleep at the airport all night, like on a bench. And like, they were, they were like this guy with his bicycle, with his mask. And he was like, like yelling at us all night long. Like he was like chasing us. Like, so we stay with our, our mask on all fucking night long. I was like, I'm not going to sleep with my mask on. You fucking crazy. <laughs> but anyway, that's, <laughs> there was a little part of the story. But then the next day we, we could have the, we take the plane. We went to Texas and everything was fine and when we get back like in the U.S. they were forcing us to download the app of Arifcan and she was like you know if you don't have it like you cannot enter the plane like you need this app and I'm like where's the law for that what the fuck and like what you, what you're doing if people don't have like this smartphone She's like, people just go and get one. I'm like, that's absolutely stupid. That's you buy one in an airport. <laughs> right. Like, where I'm gonna fucking buy one, you know? And it, it takes time. That doesn't make any sense. So I just download it and then I enter like the plane. Everything was fine. But here in Montreal, it was like back in China. That it was terrible. Like, because we were unvaccinated, we were like put apart and they put like a a sticker on our uh, passport saying that the green mean that you're unvaccinated but it was cool because we didn't wait in the big line we were like five people <laughs> and, and they're trying to scare the shit out of you and we refused to get the test at the airport because we were like we just take one you know and it's negative so i'm not gonna take another one and he was like but you're gonna have a ticket you know like uh, it's like seven hundred fifty thousand dollar of ticket and i was like i don't mind just 
send the document to the court. I, I don't give a fuck. Like, you I'm not going to take this test. And it has been. Exactly. Has been. Right. So it, 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 it cannot tell you that you cannot force you to take this test because there's a lot of saying that they cannot put a, uh, a thing in your, in, your, in your body, actually, without your consent. So we know that. So we, we said no, basically. And they let us go. And we never received a ticket, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So that was my experience with the with the flight. Actually, pretty crazy, right? It, it, it's remarkable the the you know the extent that the the government and public health of Canada would go to to prevent you know people who are unvaccinated. You know that you can't do anything. You you you're, you're we talk we talk a lot about segregation. You know, it's like, oh, it's not segregation. Oh, it's not that kind of, uh, not got, not that kind of thing. It's not that kind of society now. Bullshit. I call bullshit on that because you absolutely just, oh, the passport. You got a sticker, right? Yeah. So you're unvaccinated, and then you went in a line. If it was like five people, but I can imagine what were all the people that were actually waiting in line who were vaccinated. What were they, what were they thinking? Not that you and I would care. It's like it's fine. You you want to wait in that line? You go right ahead. But what they're thinking? What's going on through their minds? It's like, oh my God, stay away from me. Stay away oh, yeah. from me. <laughs> you, <know. laughs> you are selfish, dangerous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like example for, for, for my family, you know, we, we've been to Florida numerous times. Okay, exactly four times. Okay. Great. Um, during this pandemic, since it started. Okay. We've been tested. We've done the PCR test, not knowing that we can just take an antigen test. Okay. That's, that's our own fault. You know, we realized that and we did it differently coming down our last time and going home. Same thing. We did all that. Everything was negative. There was no issues. There was, there was no problems and knock on wood. You no, know, like we, we, we've never been sick. All four of us, you know, we just do the, you get enough sleep. You take your vitamins, you take your vitamin C, you do your exercise, just, and, and a lot of it is mental health as well. You know? Oh, yeah. A lot. <laughs> and what the government is doing now is just like, is just this weakening people, which is very, very unfortunate. Um, and we're going to get into that again a little bit later on. There's so many things I want to talk about here. I don't know if uh, <laughs> over our, our allotted time. Oh, fuck that. Who cares about a lot of time? We, just... <laughs> we can make multiple videos, though. <laughs> I like this. I like this. So going back to Texas. Okay. Yes. Texas, um, so fun. We were we were at the event with uh, with Cameron Culp uh, at his at his farm and with other Texas food distributors, mm -hmm. and it was a great time. You know, oh yeah. We were, we were only there for like four or five days, um, but we were there a lot longer. But we, Ten days, yeah. We, what we took out of it was was tremendous. Um, and one on Saturday night, there was uh, they had a they had a dinner dance. Okay. Yeah. Now while everybody was dancing and partying you and i we we we, we connected more yeah. on, uh, on on a very um emotional level okay and uh, i pulled you to the side while everybody's dancing <laughs> <laughs> I, I i had I, I heard about your past okay i heard about it from my from my wife i heard about it from from david but i wanted to hear it from you now if you're comfortable, I want you to tell everybody listening and watching, you know, what, what you went through and how you overcame it. And looking at you now, you look like a million bucks, more billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, and I think that it's important for other people who have gone through what you've gone through to hear about this and find ways to overcome the situation. So I'm going to let you tell me about it. Um, tell everybody else about it. And yeah, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Anybody listening right now, open your ears because this is, this is remarkable. <laughs> now I heard this story with music blaring in the background. You right now you have nothing. To <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. I don't, I don't even realize how crazy it is because this part of myself doesn't exist anymore. It's just like, I'm me now. I'm my best expression working on true, but it's just like when I, anyways, I'm just going to tell it so people can understand what I'm saying. Uh, where to start? You want me to start 
like at the real beginning where I was a child or it's like more when you started getting those feelings okay so starts okay a long ago so but actually okay I'll give a, a little context when I was a kid I was extremely shy you know I wasn't able to communicate clearly what I want out of this life out of people I was just extremely limited I have very low processing ability and it was just Every day was a fucking nightmare for me. Just going through a day was was awful. Like I hated life in general. And it starts like at uh, a very young age, actually, maybe like 12 or 13 years old. I really start to realize like, okay, like I am not going to, I'm not going to do it with this life. Like I know that I would have a lot of difficulty through life. Like it was obvious for me, but I was, I find like some kind of alternative to make my life less uh, painful, so to speak. So at 14 years old, I discover like weed and alcohol. So I start with that. And I was like, oh, you know, when I'm drinking, I'm like, I can be more comfortable with people. I can talk more to people and be more myself, not knowing that I was just screwing my mind, but... (laughs) In the head that at this time I didn't understand how the mind function, but uh, anyway, then I it wasn't enough. I needed more because I wasn't comfortable in my body at all. So I found like hard drug, like uh, in English, I think it's uh, amphetamine. Amphetamines, yeah. Amphetamine, yeah. So I started that, and it was like the shit for me. Like I could like really 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 be comfortable like I had the I was going to school always I was always high I was like doing oral presentation like it was normal for me and I was like skinny like too skinny it was disgusting but I had a a problem with that that too of course and um yeah so I, I just did drug like till till forever I never stopped that drug till 24 years old actually but um yeah so I just had to go to high school. I finished my high school, but had to uh, do my maths and my English again in the adult school. And at the adult school, I was always getting high also. Like there was never a moment where I was like telling myself, okay, I had to stop. Like for me, it was just part of myself. It was me, right? right. So uh, at... 18 years old I quit the home like my parents home my hometown and I went like it's a five hours drive from here and uh I start to what is the after high school what is it in English it's the uh college or university no the one before the university prep yeah kind of right anyways I went I went there and I started a course and it was like uh heart and letter and I was like doing French literature and stuff like that but I hated that so much and I find myself uh being really extremely more anxious than I never have been before like I make my first huge depression so I went to see like a doctor I was like okay I don't know what's going on but it's not going well like I cannot go to school I hate that it's really it felt like I, I was about to die like every day and I didn't understand what was going on. So she gave me pills. So I took pills for a while and I was, when I start taking those pills, I just stopped school because I was literally a vegetable. Like I couldn't even think for myself. It was just like, it was all foggy and all shitty. So I became even more depressed. And then like, during like six years, <laughs> I, I was making the same pattern, the same shit over and over and over again with like alcohol, drugs, medication for like six years. And then my parents would like take me back to their place and then I would go again and then fall again. And I, I did that like Constantly multiple times. Right. Yeah. Right. I was completely fucked. I was stuck. And I didn't know what to do with my life. So 
the last time that I did that was like two years ago. And uh, I was like old enough to understand that I wouldn't make it like at all. And I was tired of this pattern and I knew that I couldn't get out of this pattern. I knew it, I felt it and I didn't understand why, but I was like, it's, it's over. Like I'm fucking done with this. I have no solution for myself. I, 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 would, I wasn't even able to like make a resume and have a job because my life was too overwhelming. I was too fucked. <laughs> like I was too depressed. Like, and it was, it was scary, you know? So having no solution, I was like, okay. So I've, I've written a letter for my family, like suicidal letter. I was about to kill myself really. So I write them letter, like telling that it's not their fault. And it was me that didn't know how to end all this shit. And oh yeah, because like a couple of days before I called my mother again and she told me like, I cannot help you anymore. Like I'm not helping you by bringing you home. Like you, I have no solution for you anymore. Like, I'm sorry, but it's done. So I was like, shit, like even my mother don't want to have me back. What I'm gonna fucking do. So yeah, so I write them letter and then I took, man, I took, I was taking like three different medication in the time. So I took like a bunch of them, like a lot of them with alcohol, with uh, amphetamine and weed. And uh, yeah, that's it. But I took a lot of it and I was like hoping to not waking up in the morning. But then I wake up in the morning feeling like, oh my God, it was it terrible. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, like shit, man. Now I have to deal with life again. Like shit, the death doesn't want me. So it was like, I think it's funny now, but at the time it was like- See, it's great that we can talk about that. Oh shit, you didn't die. Yeah, like, oh, you know? God damn it. Like, okay, like, okay. So I remember like that my brother, David, he was like kind of different from my other family members because I knew like he was in the quest of like uh, personal development and stuff like that. And I knew that he was always like having a new thing for himself. And so I just decided to call him and I was like, David, um, <laughs> I'm not doing great right now. Like I need a solution. And if you don't have one, I have one. Like I had multiple plan in my head and he was like, oh yeah, I have something for you. And I was like surprised, like, uh, okay, like, cool. He's like, okay, so I'm coming for you. Like tomorrow morning, pack your shit and I'm coming. And I'm like, okay. But he's like, uh, but one thing to know is that you have to be um, willing to accept change and also help yourself, you know, like willing to do the things that I will show you. And I was like, yeah, like, I don't give a fuck. You know, I, I will do whatever it takes. I'm screwed. Okay. So it cannot be worse than it is right now. So for me, it was just like, I was winning a little bit of time for myself again. It was like, okay, it's like the last spark of life that I have is David, you know? So yeah, he came and we packed my thing and in the car, this was like a five hour ride. He was like, playing an audio and it was Cameron actually and I didn't understand English at all okay before techno tutor I wasn't speaking English so I was like what the fuck is that I don't want to listen to that like I'm I'm broken like I just I just don't want that I just want the peace and like be alone in my dramatic state and like it's like no listen and like anyway like okay well I don't fucking understand but I didn't understand the point either. So just listen to that, not understanding a thing. And it was like Cameron is the like the co-founder of Techno Tutor. And it was like, tech was what? Why is that? <laughs> like, I'm gonna show you. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, so we arrived home <laughs> and he's like, sit down, I'm gonna show you what is techno tutor. I'm like, no, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> 
like, I'm dying. <laughs> He's like, no, you shut the fuck up and you're going to listen to the presentation. And I'm like, okay. Well, I told him that I wanted to change, so I will listen. And it was in English, so I didn't understand the thing, right? I was like, that's bullshit. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, you want me to fucking... Anyway, so you just made it. It was long. I was, I was mad. I was mad because I was sad and like, I just, I smoked weed in the morning. I was super tired. I was just like, man. You didn't want any of it. Right. It's like, it's too much for me, but super overwhelming. But anyway, I listened to it. I went to bed and the day after he was uh, going to uh, Mexico for a gen event. So he told me like, okay, now you have the tool to change yourself. So use it while I'm gone. So it's the best time to using it. Like I'm not going to be there. So, and I was like, yeah, whatever. Get the fuck out so I can be alone and smoke my cigarettes. You know, <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> so it took me like two or three days before I start to use it because you know, at the beginning, I was just like living my my thing. Like I needed to rest and breathe and uh, be dramatic a little bit. <laughs> so <laughs> when I start to use it, I was like, how the fuck is going to help me? <laughs> that was my first reaction. But it was like, yeah. if David told me that it works and it's going to change my life, I will use it for real. So I start to use it like, four or five hours a day like crazy because I was like kind of transcending my addiction my addictive personality in techno tutor so I was like just addicted to techno tutor at this moment so <laughs> yeah and <laughs> that's pretty cool that there's good in this addictive personality right um yeah so he, he came back like a week and a half after and is like entering the home. And he's like, how are you doing? I'm like, man, I'm doing amazing. Like I've stopped medication. I don't smoke weed. I don't want to smoke weed, but uh, I, I just still smoke cigarette, but I know that I can cure that. Like, man, it's amazing. I can think for myself. I, my, my brain is clear. My mind is clear. It is amazing. I feel good. And he's like, cool. I'm like, you know, you know, not surprised at all. He's like, no, I knew it. I knew it would work. And like, the best part is that he told my parents, like, I'm going to bring her back on track in a month. And my parents were like, you know, David, you're unrealistic. Like, it's crazy. Like, we try so many times and she's just fucked. And he's like, no, I know I can do it. And then a fucking week and a half after, I was like, ready to go. And like, ready to, you know, live my life and find a job and uh, just live, actually. And it was like, okay, so this is what it is to, like, think clearly and love life. Like, it, it was just, it was insane. It, it was purely insane. So, um, yeah, basically now it's just ridiculous how stable I am. Like, it's been, like, almost weird and I'm using it. But, uh, yeah, I... You know, I'm a distributor for Techno Tutor now. I am in a relationship now. I have amazing relationship all around the, wor the world. Like I am traveling. I was traveling. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have money. Like I have car now. I have like I have everything that I wanted. And I know it's just like the beginning. Like this is just the beginning. Like I know for sure that you and I in a couple years, we're going to be like freaking billionaire. And we're gonna we're gonna really make a big difference in this world. Like with this tool, especially, it's just it's just amazing. It saved my life, literally. So that's why I think uh, that's why I became a distributor because I see for myself what it does, and I know for sure that now human nature can change because I am the living proof of it. And I know that people all around the world they don't think that. It's like, oh, I'm born like that? Too bad. No, you can change. You can be your best version of yourself, literally. I think the key yeah. thing is there, you hit it right in the head there. 
have to be willing to change. Yes. If you're not willing to change, not, 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 nothing's going to happen. You know, exactly. Same result. Nobody's going to do it for you. And it's it, it's remarkable, you know, the transformation, you know, stemming from the beginning of all this to where you are now using Techno Tutor, not having support from your family, your mom pretty much just saying like, no, I don't want nothing to do with you, you know, to, to this. Yeah, you put in a lot of effort, you put in a lot of time, but, and it didn't feel good for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever feels good when you're changing something that's, that you're really keeping the same for so many years, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. And, and like, like, look at you now. You yeah. You have a relationship with, with William and that's phenomenal. I applaud yeah. for that. And I one question here. Okay. Yes. Well, don't tell David to ask this question. Well, he's going to see you anyway, so who cares? Sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> when he came back from Mexico, did he have like a color? Did he have a tan at all? Because it, anytime I've seen him, we were in Florida, in Texas, he's like one shade all the time. Like he's just like he's mellow, he's, like vanilla kind. He doesn't change colors in the sun. What's going no. on? <laughs> he's like super white. Like it's incredible. But I think like... <laughs> At a gin event, it's like not even going outside. It's like doing this gin stuff. And so I I don't know. He didn't go outside and enjoy the sun at all. He's like oh. super white. Like it's like next level. Like it's like a ghost. Right? He's got a buzz cut too. So it's like you get no nothing keeps him getting yeah. on your head, you know. So I know. I'm going to have words with that guy after. Uh, <laughs> we love you, David. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we love you, man. <laughs> Uh, um, so how long did you go like did you use technical tutors through this process like, you know from the you said a week and a half that you that you felt great but i'm sure it continued on after that so from that point on to where you got comfortable telling others about what you went through how long of a process was that um being comfortable with it was like a bit longer like maybe a couple months i don't know exactly uh how many months but maybe like five or six months before i really get comfortable to talk about it because actually i, I had to deal with a lot of shame within myself like i was feeling judged by anybody but i realized that i was actually just judging myself but it took me a while and a lot of self-honesty and this is a big point like if you're not honest with yourself like you won't go anywhere and i was I was like so fucked that it, it took me like, yeah, it took me a while before I decided to share this, but I realized also that I could help people with this. I could absolutely make people understand that literally you can have an amazing life if you apply yourself, you know? So yeah, basically approximately six months before I really get comfortable. I, I was sharing already, but not, I wasn't comfortable, but now, now I am. Uh, more than ever yeah and I think that's what people need to understand like it's not like you blink your eyes and it's going to happen overnight no it, it is a process you have to start somewhere you have to find your starting point you found yours because you're gonna you're gonna kill yourself like, yeah. that was your starting point and that's yeah you that you were going to change things right yeah and, and it happens for a lot of us my starting point for for techno tutor when i started coming into this i came in late in the game you know leah yeah. you know she's been doing this for a long time and she kept pushing and pushing and pushing me to, to come on board and me being a typical guy yeah i know i'm not got it i understand no problem i know everything <laughs> that i didn't know anything right I, I was reacting i was yelling at my kids i was fighting with leah all the time and then finally it got to a point where we were we started going separate ways or why or whatever you know we just weren't together right. in the same path she was getting better. I was staying the same. Me staying the same was not the best for my family and for myself. Yeah. Then I went to uh, the event in Orlando, Geneva in Orlando, and ended up being a, a TT event anyways, because we were all about the poolside <laughs> every, <laughs> every yeah. day. And uh, that's when I realized that it was like, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very welcoming, open family. We're all here for the same reason. And that's just to to help realize our true abilities you know like we have so many suppressed suppressed uh, abilities that were that, that's not coming out and it's because we're programmed in a way for the longest time 
yeah. to suppress those abilities. We, we, we cannot let them out. Now it's like, now that I've been doing techno tutor more and more, I'm more open with Leah. I'm more open with my kids. I'm more open with myself, more honest with myself. Like you said it yourself, you know, yeah. self-honesty. You know, yeah. I, I'm accepting the fact that the things that have happened to me in the past, you know, with, with, uh, with my parents, you know, how I was raised and I'm not, you know, blaming them. Yeah, blame them, but leave it there. <laughs> right? yeah. don't, don't bring it, accept it, acknowledge it, put the blame, okay, work on it and move on. I got exactly. a lot of work to do. You know, I'm on far from, nobody's perfect. I'm on far from that, you know, and, and I'm welcoming the process. You know, amazing. Some phenomenal people and some some new great friends, and you know yourself. Like the conversation we had in in, in Texas uh, that night, like when you told me what what you went through, it was just like okay, like an everyday kind of a thing. I oh, like it's kind of like, you know, I woke up, had breakfast, had a shower, had a coffee, and went about my business. You know, that's how you told me that story. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't affect you whatsoever. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> That's, that's because you work on yourself. You understand what you have to do to change yourself and and move on. Yeah, exactly. I applaud, I applaud you for that. And I'm hoping anybody else watching or listening to this can take some little nuggets um, and apply it in their lives. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I applaud you too, though. It's amazing that, oh. that you're part of this too now. Like, we're all going through some shit in our lives, right? We're all fucked. We're all have been brainwashed by the system so that we all have to change. Like there is more story, like more intense than others. But at the end of the day, we're all fucked. So that's cool that you had enough self honesty to admit it and go through this process and now crushing it. Like, look at you. That's cool. And it's only going to go up from there. Oh, yeah. Just the beginning. That's just the beginning we, we, we talked about the next wave and everything and i mentioned on a few of our calls that no it's it's a tsunami coming you know my oh, yeah. rock stars they're going to be the future you know when i'm long dead and gone they're going to be continuing on my legacy and making sure that other kids out there can uh can achieve their their true potential yeah so, yeah that. exactly Excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I, I never thought I would have children before using Techno Tutor. Now I'm like excited about having children and like raise them like properly with the right education and like creating the, the second wave. I'm like super excited about this. Like never thought that before, like at all. You can see, <laughs> right. now, you can see really what, what, what what kids are being taught in schools now. You know, like we, we can talk for hours on end about you know <laughs> education system and what kids are being taught and and what they're they're not being taught and yeah it, it can go on forever we can keep save that for for another uh another chat but um yeah it's kids are the future and they need to be showing the right things right now they're not being taught the right things to succeed no. they're taught they're taught how to create more division yeah exactly they're, they're taught to be scared scary. of each other you know right and when we were in Texas, we saw, you know, my girls, we saw Cameron and Katie's kids. We saw Maya with, with, with and, uh, and Keith with, with Ben there. And you saw how they were all just being kids. Right. They were being what kids do, you know, they're, they're, they're exploring. They were, it's in their nature. They ask questions and they're just having fun. Yeah. Well, and if there's any problems, you guide them through that situation. Exactly. Right? Yeah simple yeah. as that this is how it's supposed to be exactly and i'm hoping that people will see this and be like okay yeah that's true and if anybody has any questions out there feel free to reach out to either one of us you know we'll gladly have an open open discussion with uh, with you and then talk more in depth about it talk absolutely about so what going at the texas event now what was the one thing that you took from that um from that time while you were down there you were there like said, longer than i have been so what can, what, oh, you mean in take? texas yes in texas yeah yeah wow um a lot of stuff there this is a i think it's a hard question but um i would say because i wasn't in a relationship before and i saw the importance of getting into a relationship and also the importance of having kids and also like the power of the group like all of that at the same time was like throwing my face. I was like, oh shit, okay. Like I have I have some work to do on myself. So because 
you know, like when a man and a woman and go together, like you become even more powerful and like supporting each other in this process is just amazing. And I, I am living it right now. And I can tell that it's true. I was like, it's bullshit. I don't need anybody. I'm, I'm a strong woman. Like, no, I was full of shit. I can tell. I can tell. And it's like a feminist programming as well that I had. And I'm currently working through it. And it's like, it's amazing because I, I can like live my feminine expression even more now. And it's just the beginning of my relationship, but I'm like, it's going to be so amazing. And like, like I said, the power of the group, the power of seeing the children act, uh, reacting to, together, it's just, it's just so, so powerful to me. I was like, I get excited about having my child after this event. I was like, okay, like it's really possible to create little being that will like help the system to be a better one. You know, we are supporting them to be, uh, the best version of themselves and then they're gonna have children and then this is how we change the world right this is our responsibility to give up our bullshit our ego our self-interest to make sure that our children will you know eventually freaking change the world like <laughs> oh that's right oh that's true right everybody takes things at face value they don't question things that's why it's said at the top of this this yeah that you know this is a place where you just talk about anything and ask questions and don't be afraid to ask the questions yeah uh, exactly yeah, so i have one for you afraid. oh no no um, <laughs> you know i just wanted to know like how about you like what did you get from this event what is your biggest insight aside from shooting guns oh yeah that was so cool <laughs> forget about that <laughs> uh it's hard to because oh, i never shot a gun in my life and of course you know down there and like shooting for canadian shots. It was good. Of course, Cameron's a good teacher, so he got me through that uh, that uh, situation. It was a lot of fun. But um, what I got out of that was just it was a lot of firsts for me, and yeah, I don't, I didn't do a lot of things like yeah, I shot guns and then yeah, I fished. I'm 45 years old and I fished for the first first fucking time in my life. Really, that's amazing. We we live in Canada, and fishing is like a everyday occurrence over there yeah it's a thing <laughs> um but i don't do a lot of those things because i feel like i'm being judged i feel like I'm, I, I paint these negative pictures in my head like i'm gonna make a fool of myself but right. being around everybody there that was that was that was gone you didn't even think about that everybody's there for the same reason everybody was there having a good time no worries whatsoever even though there's, there's so much bullshit that's going on around us in the world that never came yeah. nobody talked about it we were just being there in the moment and we're there for a reason and that's to make the world a better place for for future generations yeah you know, it's like, no it's not going to happen now it's going to happen down the road and we we are starting now we are growing now and seeing that for my kids is what gives me that really the real true purpose you know I'm doing what I'm doing now for my kids. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. Amazing. That's uh that that's my takeaway. Yeah. That's beautiful. I'm gonna cry, man. So. <laughs> I'm too stable now. I cannot cry anymore. I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, we all have both of this all good. It's all okay. I'm like a rock. <laughs> Thank you for, for sharing this. This is uh this was beautiful for real. No problem, no problem. Absolutely. Um, so now what are, what is some advice that you can tell others who are dealing with what you went through? Oh, um, actually I can just tell you that suicide is not an option at all. Right. There is always a solution. And even though you think it's the end, it's never the end. Like actually what we're talking about, this is a real tangible solution that can help anybody like I was the most fucked person <laughs> that I know for sure like uh what I didn't mention actually in the story is that uh I've saw I saw a lot of psychologists psychiatrists uh social workers and uh, all of them they were saying that I was like uh TDHD is it uh mm -hmm. bother ADHD sorry and it's 
mixed mix with the French. Um, <laughs> uh, borderline personality and also major depression and also like uh, chronic anxiety. Okay, I had all of this. That's what they were saying. So if you feel like you can relate with all of this shit, like I overcome this with Techno Tutor. There is a tool out there that exists for the first time in the history and it work. I can, I can tell. And the support is there. The community is there. Like with the self-perfected community, we are building a community of equal. And what I can tell you is that it is possible to change and that I can support you with that. Rob can support you with that. We are a lot of people all around the world that can help you overcome this shit that the psychologists are telling you that is not necessarily true because look at me. Do I look like a fucked up borderline person? No. And I don't take any medication. I don't take anything. Why when I'm sick, I don't even take Tylenol. I don't take any shit. I'm like pure now. So yeah, it's possible to change. And that's, that's what I have to tell you. <laughs> no, and, that, and that's great. And for myself, you know, like I said, I'm 45. So I've been around the block. And I had deeply ingrained programming from my childhood that I'm working on and I'm getting better. And I want to say that, yeah, anybody can change. Absolutely. Even stubborn as people can be. I know, you know, between Europeans and Canadians and Americans, uh, everybody can be stubborn. Oh, yeah, I I'm was. One of them. <laughs> yeah, it takes a while, but I finally got my ass in gear and shit's starting to happen. You know, there you go. Turning and I'm seeing a difference. And my kids, my my eight year old Kiara, wants to start a business. Yeah, she's amazing. <laughs> what eight year old says say they want to start a business? <laughs> Come on, she sold bracelets to everybody down in Orlando. <laughs> right? No, it's so funny. I was impressed. Yeah, can we build a website? I'm like, okay, you want to go to a park? Well, all right, fine. You know, we'll help you out with that. <laughs> That's amazing. And my five year old, she had very few swimming lessons. Yeah, uh, use Techno Tutor and to help Mackenzie with, with, with swimming. She should put all those words in, you know, like doggy style, uh, paddling and um, floating and all those words that are related to swimming and stuff like that. Yeah. It helped her. And she's like a fish now. She's a fish out of the <laughs> Can't get her out of the pool. You know? It's incredible. It, 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 it's phenomenal. You know, so this works yeah. and we're living proof of that. You know, right. you know, myself, my kids, you know, David, there's so many people and there's so many people that can support others throughout their processes. Yeah, exactly. And with the kids, what is cool is that uh, the zero to seven, they're still in their uh, natural inability. So it's super easy for them to like grasp thing and just like you said, Mackenzie, like it's like super easy for her. Like you just integrate a couple words and like, oh, I'm a fish now. Like. And it's not magical. It's just like, it's vocabulary. It's common sense. It's just, it works. It's, yeah. But you have to see a, a presentation to understand exactly. all of that, of we course. Talk about it to a blue in the face, but yeah, you have to re reach out to us and we'll gladly tell you all about it. Absolutely. Uh, so one, one last thing before we, we finish off, Caroline, is like, what are some things that you can say to parents out there who are having a tough time right now dealing with the stresses of life and with COVID um, and how, you know, how Techno Tutor can help them? Um, actually, I would say something similar that I just tell to the other one that we're struggling because uh, like I know it's an hard time right now. Everybody is in a really, really mad situation. Everybody's sad. Like people are literally broken right now. But like I said, there is a solution out there and it works. And we are a community of equal and we are all around the world and we can help you. Like, I don't know anything else in this world that can help you change your situation right now. But Techno Tutor, it is uh, efficient. It works. It works not just for me, not just for you, but for anybody that has used it have changed for the best and they're becoming like insanely successful right now like look at Mitch look at Jess look at Cameron Katie look at everybody it's just it's so cool to see and like we're not special 
not at all. We're not special and we want that for everybody that uh, is willing to change, actually. Like if you are fucking tired of this bullshit that the government is putting on you, like send us a message and we're gonna help you. We're gonna help you because we know that anything is possible. As a human being, we are freaking powerful and we have no idea how powerful we are. And like, it's just a matter of like taking your power back. And yeah, that's what I would tell you guys. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> like Bernard would say, join us. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, it's phenomenal. And like you said, yeah, it is a difficult time right now yes. um, where, where mental toughness is at, um, at a premium. You know, everybody has been brought down because of COVID. You know, they can either say, oh, what to do now? I can't handle this anymore. I don't know. I'm going to have a job. Don't worry about it. This is at- all phases. We will get out of this. Yeah. We will we will succeed. You know, this this will pass. Yeah. You know, we're like the boat of success that is like waiting for you to come because if you don't take it, like I'm not gonna lie, this is going to get worse. This is just the beginning of this pandemic thing. And like we are here. We look at look how amazing our life is right now like everybody else is like freaking falling apart and we are like consistent with our amazingness and it's not because we're like more than anybody no it's because we're using the right tool we have the the right community to help us like going through all this shit so it's just yeah (laughs) it's just that (laughs) We're, we're, we're we're here to help each other yeah exactly the support is like massive yeah so yeah and if anybody has any questions um, feel free to reach out to either one of us and we will gladly have that conversation with you. Carol Ann, thank you so much for talking with me. It's awesome. Thank you for inviting me. You're amazing, Rob. It was amazing. Thanks. Thank you and you're amazing as well. You know, to see what you've gone through and where you are today is, is awesome. <laughs> Let's I'm go. Really, no, it's awesome. Let's go. <laughs> one final thought for everybody who's out there listening and watching. Um, if you want things to change, you got to change things in your life. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And think about this sentence. That's it. Think about it. Think, think deeply. Think yeah. Deeply. Write it down and uh, you'll get your answer. All exactly. right. Exactly. Caroline, take care. Everybody out there, take care. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Rob. Bye.